Welcome to Pure Aqua for the most advanced reverse osmosis, water treatment, and purification systems worldwide. We are at the world headquarters of Pure Aqua Inc. In production completed the fabrication of two containerized systems, a 45-foot container, which I'm in here, and a 45-foot, which we'll discuss shortly. Uh, this plant is going to the country of Turkmenistan for a power plant application, and we're treating about 240 gallons a minute on the raw water side. So on the feed side here of the SWR system, we're utilizing twin alternating feed and backwash pumps uh, that are made out of duplex 2205 stainless steel. These pressurize the water up to 40 or 50 PSI, on this uh, feed pump skid here, we, we, we have you know, inlet and out, outlet isolation valves, check valves of course, and a pressure gauge to monitor the process pressure. Um, right after the feed and backwash pumps, we have a pre-chlorination injection and coagulation, or of course we disinfect the feed water and inject with coagulation to enhance the filter performance to protect the membranes downstream. Uh, we have a quadruplex multimedia filter here. These four filters operate in parallel. We have fully automated uh, control valves here where the backwash cycle is fully automated. The service you know, resumes in, in complete automation as well. Um, we're using George Fisher valves that are corrosion resistant and, and, and very reliable. And they have lighting indicators here that tell you if the valves are open or closed just when you're nearby. In addition, we have air release and vacuum breakers on top of the tanks and we have cutouts here on the top. We have loading hatches for maintenance and for ease of media loading on site during startup. As well here, we're utilizing some drain valves here for maintenance and just any other needs when these filters need to be serviced. After the multimedia filters, we inject the water with a dechlorination to neutralize or knock off any residual chlorine before the membranes, followed by anti scalant to protect the membranes from fouling. Now, on the feed side of the SWRO, we're utilizing uh, an FRP 5 micron cartridge filter where you know, this removes any remaining small particles before the membrane and high pressure pump. We're utilizing Fedco's high pressure pump and energy recovery device set up here. Um, this particular pump can get us up to about 1,100 PSI if needed uh, because we're designing for a wide range of operating temperatures. Uh, on the lower end, the feed water can go as low as 5 degrees Celsius, which is extremely cold. And on the higher end during the summer or warmer times of the year, we go about 27 degrees Celsius. So again, wide range of operating temperatures. Reason why we have a very large pump, but it's, it's a very efficient pump along with an ERD device here. We're utilizing a Hydronautics SWC6LD membrane which kind of allow us to operate in this wide range of temperatures and pressures. Uh, it, it maintains a certain water quality required downstream while maintaining a low enough pressure that we can use the same pump and same setup for this wide range of pressures. Um, furthermore, we have uh, a permeate flush where the system and membranes get flushed maybe every four hours or every shutdown. Um, and that kind of just helps preserve membranes longer, kind of wash off or remove any small particles stuck on the membrane surface and kind of and more importantly is we're, we're able to kind of flush out the, the concentrated salt water or brine once the system is shut down for storage or maintenance. Um, you know, to discuss on the, on the instrument side here of the system, we're utilizing GF instrumentation, conductivity, flow meters, or PPH. Um, very reliable, proven for, from our end in, in, a, in a wide range of applications. And on the pressure vessel end, we're utilizing Protex uh, pressure vessels where, where these are rated at 1200 PSI. At the product side, uh, we're, we're dosing and adjusting the pH with pH adjustment chemical dosings and a, a post chlorination for disinfection and storage. So on the control side here, we're utilizing Siemens S7-1200 uh, PLCs uh, and we're utilizing a 9 inch HMI which is a nice larger screen. It allows really the operators to kind of see all parts of the process, the alarms, the readouts and so on very clearly. Um, our software team has done a very good job of really organizing um, each part of the process into its own screen as we'll show shortly. This is our next generation software 
um, as you'll see here, where it's very clean, very advanced actually. So on the multimedia filter side, you know, we've displayed all filters, of course, all valve readouts, you know, notifies the operator when the last backwash was effectively uh, completed and so on. Now moving down on the RO side, as you can see, we, we used clean renders of each system to really help um, keep, keep the screen look very clean and accurate really and, you know, and realistic. And that's the most important thing. And of course, all readouts are on the side, very clean, very easy to use for any uh, operator really. Um, and th that's kind of the beautiful part here with our next generation software, Pure Aqua's next generation software, and how we've kind of taken it the next, uh, to the next level. So on the raw water side here, as mentioned, we tr we're treating about 240 gallons a minute. Uh, the water gets fed into two feed and backwash pumps, followed by a chlorine injection for disinfection, coagulation, a quadruplex 48 inch multimedia filter system, an SWRO, now the per meter of this SWRO, we get about 110 gallons a minute where 60 gallons get fed into the second container, which we'll talk about shortly. The other, the other 50 or so gallons a minute get diverted and repressurized for distribution for portable use on site for various applications such as gardening, cleaning, and so on. Now the, the feed into the second RO, we, we, we pass the water into a TWRO further further purify it, reduce the salinity, get, get, get that water up to the, the necessary feed requirements for the EDI, and then from there we pass the water onto an EDI system where we get the water up to around 18 mega ohms or ultra pure water grade for further use of, in the process on site. So aside from designing around a wide range of operating temperatures, uh, Pure Aqua kind of came in to bid for this job. Our equipment here is producing more water more efficiently and we're able to design around two containers while the systems currently on site are housed in four containers. Uh, we're you know, basically reducing the capital cost for the customer here by um, utilizing less containers for more water and they're able to utilize that site or that space on site for other, for other uses. Um, that's, that's kind of the, the heart of the engineering process here at Pure Aqua. Design more efficiently, reduce the capital cost, and keeping, of course, operation, reliability in mind. So as discussed in the previous container, part of the SWRO permeate gets repressurized for portable use, and the other part is fed into this container. These are the repressurization pumps for the desalinated water for portable use. Um, just a very straightforward setup where we have inlet and outlet isolation valves, pressure gauge, and a digital flow meter downstream to monitor the flow rate. Well, these pumps alternate in, in operation as well, and they, they pressurize the water to around 100 psi because the, the the final location of that site is very far to where relative to where these containers are housed. Um, now, the permeate gets treated now through this uh, tap water RO system. The feed is around less than 500 ppm. We have a feed pump, one micron cartridge filter and a stainless steel high pressure pump. The low pressure pumps here where we're utilizing uh, Grundfos's CRN series which are stainless steel 316, very reliable, corrosion resistant and perform. Um, and the rest of the, the rest of the ROs is re really our standard setup where we have pre and post filter gauges, we have GF instrumentation, permeate conductivity or P sensor on the feed side. This system is operating at a slightly higher pressure relative to other RO systems because we again are re designing around a wide range of operating temperatures. Uh, with that we're forced to use class 800 globe valves to maintain um, you know certain design requirements and so on. On this particular system we're utilizing hydrogen Audix SWC6LD membranes which have very good rejection uh, while maintaining a low operating pressure. The product of the RO, the tap water RO, is going to get housed in a storage tank where then we repressurize that water and, and pass it through an EDI system. You know, the water coming out of, out of that RO will be less than 10 ppm for sure at all times uh, to maintain certain feed requirements required by um, or required for this EDI module. Um, on this EDI, we have, you know, our feed divert to divert the water in case the feed requirements are not met. We have a stainless steel 316 CRN grunt fuss pump as well to pressurize the water up to 40 to 50 psi to pass the water through the EDI module, followed again by a one micron cartridge filter to ensure anything kind of thrown in that feed water tank is removed before uh, getting passed through the EDI module. Furthermore, we have you know our pressure gauges, process valves to maintain certain back pressures and precisely control our flow rates. Now on the product side of the 
the EDI, the water gets you know stored into a storage tank. From there, we repressurize the water again up to 100 psi and pump it to the final point of distribution. Um, we're utilizing the same setup as, as talked about before, two pumps operating that alternate. They're CRN manufactured by Grunfuss. We've got our inlet and outlet isolation valves, process flow meter and gauges. Now on the back side of the container here, we have a flush skid, uh, which will be utilized for both flush and CIP operations. Due to space constraints, we had to put the skid in, in the 40 foot container and could not fit it in the 45 in order to maintain um, our, our, our quite efficient design here. Um, this is a fairly standard setup where we have a stainless steel 316 pump followed by gauges, a flow meter, and a 5 micron cartridge filter. You know, 90% of the time this will be used for the permeate water flush, which was discussed previously in the SWRO container. The other 10% or so, it will be used as a CIP skid for the SWRO and the TWR system. We have provisions set up for both, we've designed for both cases to reduce the cost on the customer where they can use one skid or one system for both uh, setups. In summary, we have two, two containers, 145 and 140 foot going to the country of Turkmenistan for a power plant application. We're feeding open intake seawater, where we're passing the water through a quadruplex multimedia filter, an SWRO, Part of that water out of the SWR permeate gets diverted for, for portable use. The other part gets fed into th this container, which is the TWRO and the EDI system. Um, the final product water here on the EDI would be about 45 gallons a minute. Product water, as mentioned before, for portable use is about 50 gallons a minute. So in total, we're giving the customer about 100 gallons a minute of usable water. Um, and Again, just a quick summary about our container setups. We have insulation, we have diamond flooring, climate control, efficient LED lighting, and of course, the peace of mind of factory installation and testing where the customer benefits from once these systems arrive on site. Thank you for choosing Pure Aqua as your primary supplier.